you guys, it's here. My second puzzle with Ravensburger is finally here. I'm so excited to finally tell you all about it in this video, which is sponsored by Ravensburger. So after the uh, 3000 piece puzzle, a lot of you were asking for a slightly uh, smaller puzzle. <laughs> so that's what we did. Plus it is a meta puzzle, which means that each of these giant puzzle pieces is its own mini puzzle within the puzzle. We made a custom die cut so each of these puzzle pieces could pop out from the main puzzle. So I can also finally reveal that here in the US, this puzzle is a Barnes & Noble exclusive. You can get it for $24.99 at barnesandnoble.com. And here in the US, that's the only place that you can get it until October, and then it'll be more widely available. Now, if you're outside of the US, uh, this puzzle has already been available in some countries for a little while, and there have been a lot of questions about what this puzzle is, where this image came from, so I'm gonna answer them all for you right now. <laughs> Okay, so I had my first meeting with Ravensburger in July of 2021, and now it is April of 2023. So making this puzzle has been a long process. We were actually designing this one simultaneously with the 3000 piece puzzle. This was actually the first idea that I pitched to Ravensburger, but it took longer to make since we had to make the custom die cut. And since the other puzzle just uses the regular piece cut, um, we were able to put that one out first. And honestly, a part of the reason why I went with Ravensburger for these puzzles is because their factory is all in-house. So they were able to do this custom die cut relatively simply. You know, it just, it wasn't me managing a bunch of different vendors and factories and things. Like they, they were able to handle it. So here you can see my initial sketch. Um, I mocked up a few different piece cut ideas and this is the one we went with. I also made a quick sketch with color added so that it was really clear that the big puzzle pieces were their own objects in the image. Now, I just wanna be totally clear here. I did not come up with the idea of doing a mini puzzle inside of a bigger puzzle that interacts with the image. A handful of other companies have already done that before. I also did not come up with the idea of doing a giant puzzle piece made up of smaller puzzle pieces, but I don't know of any other thousand piece puzzles with floating puzzle piece shapes made up of smaller puzzle pieces that was done in the way that we did it. So, okay, I am fully transparent that I am not an illustrator. I just made those really simple gradients to like get the point across. And I mean, I do think that those simple gradients would still make a fun puzzle, but Ravensburger wanted to take it up a notch. So now enter Wes. Wes is a 3D artist. Uh, Ravensburger found him and sent me his website to take a look at. I was really inspired by his 36 Days of Type series, especially the letter D. Um, you can see how this like color scheme and environment sort of directly led to our puzzle image. So Wes sent over some initial concepts and from the very beginning, I was looking at how the puzzle pieces and the background interacted with each other, but also how they looked separately. You know, I immediately brought the image into Photoshop and separated it because I really wanted this to be a 
beautifully like Instagrammable image, something that could be shared really beautifully no matter how you decide to photograph it, like all together or separately or a mixture of the two. And I've had a few questions about why the puzzle pieces are like encased in glass. And that is just because um, when the die cut hits the puzzle, it never quite cuts in the same place twice. We need a little bit of leeway to account for. Uh, so we did this kind of glass outline just so it wasn't quite so obvious if the die cut was like a millimeter off to one side or a millimeter off to the other side. It just gives us a little more like wiggle room. Okay, so we went through so many revisions and emails. You can see in this sketch how uh, Rachel, the product designer, would just draw all over the image. Uh, in this case, she was saying that the pieces had to be further apart so that the puzzle pieces in between the die cuts wouldn't be super tiny. And then I would bring the designs into Photoshop and just draw all over them with different colors and textures and gradients. You can see here, this is where I first added that really rough uh, green to yellow gradient, which Wes could then add for real in the 3D image. I really was art directing this. Like I was very particular about every single aspect of this image. I really looked at every single element to make sure it would be a super fun puzzle overall. I really wanted to be mindful of not having any big sections that were all the exact same color. You know, we added this grid to the floor. We added this line to this kind of gray bar. We added this gradient up top. You can see in the sketch, um, he had added these little discs on the floor. I thought having tiny elements like that was a great idea, but we ended up turning them into these flat puzzle pieces, which obviously fits the theme of the puzzle a little bit better. So this really was like, a real collaboration between me, Wes, and Rachel. So um, many revisions later, that's how we got from my initial sketch to this beautiful puzzle. Oh my gosh, look at what just came in the mail. In here are the first copies of my second Ravensburger puzzle. Okay, okay, I can't see it yet. There's brown paper in the way. Okay, 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 here we go, here we go. Oh, I see, I see a little bit of it. I see a tiny little bit of it. <gasps> Ooh! Oh, wow! Oh, that looks so good. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. These are hot off the presses. I'm the first person that they sent them to. Oh wow, without the shrink wrap, it's even better. Oh, that's beautiful. So once again, we've got me here in the corner, Karen Puzzles. Um, we have this kind of cut overlay so that um, if you were looking at this on the store shelf, you could see that the puzzle cut is somewhat unique. I remember with this, um, they sent me like 20 different font options for this graphic and uh, that's the one we went with because it's kind of playful but also bold. Okay, let's open it up and look at the pieces. Ooh, I already see some of the custom shaped pieces. Look at that, that's so fun. Ooh, oh, I cannot wait. Look at that. Oh, I cannot wait to put this together. It's gonna be so, so much fun. Once again, I made my perfect puzzle. If I just saw this on a store shelf and I was not a part of this, I would immediately buy it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it so much. But can we just look at how beautiful these puzzle pieces are? All of the purples, all of these kind of light um, pinks and lavenders, all of the 
yellow, and then all the funky shaped pieces are mixed in. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> That's why working with Ravensburger is so great. I just get to make my perfect puzzle and then I get to sit here and solve it. Oh, I cannot wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Okay, I'm gonna stop saying I can't wait and I'm actually gonna do it. <laughs> All right, step one, the sorting is done. So that took 25 minutes. And as you can see, I made four piles. So this one is clearly all of the uh, yellow and green. I was basically like, no matter what piece shape we have, if it's yellow or green, it goes here. Then the next one is uh, edge pieces and also the funky shaped pieces. But there are definitely some where I'm not sure if it goes like here on the straight edge of one of these puzzle piece shapes or if it's an actual edge piece. So I'm gonna have to look at these two piles basically like simultaneously. And then up here we have all of the rest of the pieces that are just normal puzzle piece shapes. But um, a lot of them are kind of on a diagonal or almost like italicized like compared to the normal puzzle piece shapes. And so these, these are gonna be inside the puzzle piece shapes and then these are gonna be in the background. Can we just look at how bright and happy all of these pieces are? It's so beautiful. And I think I already spotted the first two pieces that go together. Pretty sure it is this one that connects Ah, I'm doing this with my left hand. That connects right there. Yes! Oh, that looks so good. <laughs> Okay, we're like an hour into it and I am loving this so much. As you can see, I did this entire outline and that's kind of what's so great about this puzzle. It's like a game within a puzzle. Like there are so many different elements that I'm not trying to rush through it. It's like, I wanna take it one element at a time. Like I could have started filling in some of these pieces that have yellow around the edge that are like gonna go somewhere in there. But I think it is so much more satisfying to like do all of these pieces all at once and then do all of these pieces all at once. And so you'll be able to do this puzzle multiple times and sort of do it a different way every time. Because like next time I might decide to do all the puzzle pieces first and then do the outline. And it's like sort of a gradient, but then there are enough different things going on that it's not solely just a gradient. Like you have other little hints to work off of. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. It's like challenging, but not frustrating. Oh, there it is. Okay, I've been looking for this corner piece for so long. I finally found it. Now I can move on.
Oh my gosh, look at how cool this looks. I can't get over it. So as you can see, I moved all of the inside uh, pieces off to the side and I decided to do all of the outlines of every single cutout, even the ones where it doesn't lock together and they're just kind of next to each other. That looks so cool. I am obsessed with this. But I think it's finally time to get these guys in place because I kind of need to make room so I can uh, get to the rest of the pieces. Okay, literally, this is why I made this entire puzzle. Just so that I could slide a giant puzzle piece into place. That looks so good! All right, so I felt like this was a good stopping point. So I just took a little break to take a whole bunch of promo photos, but I am so excited to get back to the puzzle. So I have just a handful of these funny looking pieces left, which are gonna slot in around here, but I didn't wanna have all of them put in for the promo photos. And then I also kind of centered the puzzle on the table and put some of the pieces over on this side just to make it more balanced for the photos. But uh, now I have two groups of pieces that is completely random. So I'm only at two hours and 18 minutes and I haven't particularly been rushing through this uh, and I'm already like halfway done. So this isn't a super hard puzzle. It's not gonna take like hours and hours and hours. So I think it is finally time for me to get back to it. All right, I just passed three hours and I have officially finished the entire background. This is so much fun. Like I don't want it to end as soon as I'm done. I want to just take it apart and do the entire thing again. I remember when we were deciding to add this grid onto the floor to just add 
a little bit more of like a visual clue of um, how all these pieces are gonna fit together so it's not just a gradient. And that definitely made it so much easier. And also having it up here, you can see the grid is a little blurry up here and then it's super sharp down here. So that made it a whole lot easier to like figure out what's gonna go where. So, all right, time to finish it up. I think I'll be done by like three and a half hours, easy. Okay, here we go, the last three pieces, and I'm done. Oh, that was so fun, and it's so, ah! Oh my God. <laughs> okay, well, if you try to smooth it down, um, don't put quite as much pressure on it as I just did. All right, all fixed, no harm done. <laughs> So that took me just under three and a half hours. Um, so really not a high difficulty puzzle at all. But my first impression, now that I've solved it for the first time, is honestly just that I can't wait to do it again. There are so many different ways that I wanna do this puzzle. Number one, I wanna do it for speed. Number two, I wanna do it out in the living room and really spread out and fully do the outside and then all the pieces entirely separately. Uh, number three, maybe I'll do all of the regularly shaped pieces and then fill in all the funny ones last. I could even just pull out each of the shapes and then just do these as like a little mini puzzle anytime I want just a tiny little puzzle to tide me over. But speaking of which, um, let's pull these out and see what this looks like. Cause like this, this was my vision. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have so much fun photographing this. I'm looking at it in the viewfinder and that looks so cool. Especially this one, this is like the hero shape right in the middle. Oh, it's so beautiful. Okay, well, I know that I'm biased, but I give this puzzle 10 out of 10, A plus. Honestly, one of the most fun puzzles I've ever done in my life and I promise I promise I'm not just saying that. I genuinely loved this. Okay, it's about a week after I solved this for the first time. This time I'm gonna do it again, but just for speed. So I'm gonna run the timer. I'm gonna go all the way through, no breaks to film close-ups or anything. And I'm not gonna worry about it being aesthetically beautiful all the way through. I'm just gonna do it in the order where I think I can get it done the fastest.
All right, I did it, except for one piece. Um, I look over here and, uh, whoops. <laughs> Better not make that mistake at Worlds. <laughs> Okay, so my final time was just under three hours, which I think is a great time for doing a thousand piece puzzle solo. Um, it's really not that difficult, but this also isn't necessarily the type of puzzle you would want to uh, rush through. I think that's literally the only time I'm gonna speed run it because most of the time I just wanna take my time and really enjoy it. <laughs> Okay, wait, I have an idea. What if we put this guy back together? And then what if we put the giant puzzle pieces on top? Okay, actually first I put the entire puzzle just straight on top and um, hello, look at those colors. That looks so cool. It's just colorful puzzle pieces on colorful puzzle pieces. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, wait, when it's like this, this is so confusing. Like, what is even going on? <laughs> oh, and look at this, where it's the same color on the foreground and the background. Oh, that looks cool. Okay, wait, and then what if we had these pieces just floating on there, plus some of the original crypt puzzle pieces, the actual ones that I photographed for this puzzle. Okay, literally, we've done it. We have achieved the ultimate puzzle piece exception. <laughs> That's so fun. It's like so hard to see what is part of the puzzle and what is an actual puzzle piece. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here for a minute and let you all uh, take this in. That's so cool. <laughs> And there we go, the second installment of the Karen Puzzles puzzle series. If you want to get one and you're in the US, you can get it at barnesandnoble.com. I'm going to have the direct link right down below. And if you're outside of the US, it should eventually be available wherever you buy Ravensburger puzzles. You can always Google Gradient Cascade Karen Puzzles and you should get localized results showing where it is available near you. And if you haven't gotten the first puzzle yet, um, it is now available internationally in tons of countries all over the world. So if you weren't able to get it last year, uh, check again, you should be able to get this one now. So if you were in one of the countries that got this early and you have already solved it, let us all know in the comments what you thought of it. Or if you haven't gotten it yet, uh, let me know in the comments which part you think you would start with. Do you think you would do the mini puzzles separately and then the background or the background and then the mini puzzles or do it all together at once? Your code word for the comments will be gradient cascade. So thank you so much for all of your support. Like really, without every single one of you watching, this puzzle would not exist. So happy puzzling and I will see you all in the next one.